I'm Marcus Miller. I'm a demand supply chain analyst here at Richmond, Virginia. It takes just as much energy to be negative, sometimes more energy to be negative than it is to be positive. And the great thing about being positive, though, is you, you have the opportunity to meet people, reach out, have people look forward to talking to you. And also, you deposit something to somebody else instead of, you know, taking from people. That's really important to me. I want, I want people really to when they have talked to me to go, wow, that yeah, was fun. You know, he didn't take anything away from me. It wasn't also to realize that the wheelchair is just the, my way of getting around. It's not who I am. It really doesn't define who I am. If you've been in an injury like I've got you know, with car wrecks or what have you, I found out that if somebody else hits you in a car or you've got an injury because of somebody else's negligence, you've got someone to stay angry with. And I met a lot of people who were really angry. I met a fellow who rolled into my room and is in a wheelchair my, my first week in rehab and he says, uh, hey, I'm so-and-so, what's your name? I said, he, said, uh, he said, I'm gonna walk out of here, I'm gonna kill myself. I said, wow, um, it's nice to meet you and you can leave. <laughs> I said, it's a little heavy for me. But the situation was, this is how he felt. And in talking to him later on, I learned he was a little bit cantankerous, of course. But he had someone to blame, he was angry. Um, the accident I caused myself. You know, I was drinking and driving, did it all on my own. And I had the option, I did think about it, I was angry with myself for a little bit, but I realized it wasn't gonna be a positive thing. The funny thing was, is before I got hurt, I really didn't like people, I didn't, wasn't, I had very few friends. I have, you know, I wasn't very outgoing because I was, you know, people, I just was nervous around people. I got paralyzed, I realized, you know, I can't keep myself quiet, I can't be, you know, you can't be angry. People won't come near you. Uh, they won't want to be around you, for goodness sakes. So I decided that uh, I'm just going to do the best I can to focus on the small things. So the first focus was to get out of the hospital. Focus on that. And the next, fo next focus was, you know, driving. The next focus was going back to school. I I'd set, unintentionally set small goals for myself. And I had, a, my family was so fantastic. My mom, you know, never once said anything negative, it's always about, let's just focus on the positive, and she kept it that way. You know, my dad and them, they always looked out, we just always looked forward, you know. Um, family was always laughing and joking, I grew up in a huge family, so it was kind of nice that way. And then a lot of my friends did fall off. I, most of my friends that just didn't know how to take it, um, or they weren't, they didn't know how to, to deal with me, or it made them feel uncomfortable. So they just kind of fell by the wayside. I had some friends who stuck with me thick and thin, um, and those are the guys that you know I leaned on forever. And when you're first injured, you don't know what the big picture is. You can only think of it in terms of all the frightening stuff, and you frighten yourself. I didn't do that. I just kind of kept it small focused. And, it, and as that progressed, I was able to do things like I met a, a great community of wheelchair people. I played wheelchair basketball semi-professionally for six years. Uh, I've had a chance to go wheelchair skiing, which is nice. I've done wheelchair tennis. Um, there's a big community of stuff out there. I have a, I have a it's all hand cycles, and I've kept myself kind of abreast of what's going on and also challenged myself to do new things because, you know, that's another thing some friends of mine in wheelchairs, they wouldn't challenge themselves. They wouldn't do new stuff because they were afraid of what's going to happen, what's going to happen. I just figured, we'll figure it out as we go along. And that's how my family, my mother's the type of person that told me, you know, you can handle anything, just keep on going. And when you hit, when you hit a wall, you just pick stuff up, dust stuff off, and keep going. So that's what I did. I don't see myself as that resilient. I see a lot of, a lot of folks who are much more resilient than I am. But I guess if you look at resiliency in the terms that we've been talking about and, and with all the focus here at work, um, it's just maintaining an, an attitude that you continue to persevere no matter what's going on. Um, no matter the struggles, no matter the strife, those kind of things, you just keep, you keep plugging forward. And um, you also, you wanna make those people around you feel good or I say feel good, inspire people, but I don't, I don't think I inspire people that much. It's just a thought process of, you know, people feeling like they, they can be themselves around you. That they that they don't walk away feeling like you've drawn something or, 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 or drained them at all. I want to bring something to you. I don't want to take things away from you. I'm not walking around with an umbilical cord trying to plug into you and suck your life out, you know. I want to bring me to the table so that when you walk away you don't say, that was tough talking to that guy. Instead you go, wow, that was nice, you know, or I had a good time. Yeah, that's how I see resiliency.